Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. In this episode we're going to begin by handling the MIG course maneuver for our first Mars probe and then we're going to attempt to do our first rendezvous and then we're going to launch our second Mars probe assuming I don't get diverted by something else along the way. But I'm starting in the VAB here because we have recently unlocked 1961 orbital rocketry and there's the Titan Series 1 fuel tank. And of course, right now we're very reliant on the Atlas rocket. Now, I don't imagine I'll be using the actual Titan 1 engines, we'll see, but the Titan 1 stage, the actual tanks are very nice because take a look, uh, entry cost only 2,880. You can't beat that. You can't tool a tank like that. Uh, for that price. Uh, best to just buy it prefab. Same with the upper stage. Um, and this actually has an optional avionics core uh, and its unlock cost is 408. Uh, it says it requires some technology to function though. But if we take a look at a 130 uh, ton core, this is 200 already. So getting the tank for 400 is a good bargain. And so yeah, let me just unlock these. I mean, hardly worth a thought, right, at that price. Um, these are not the same things. So, yeah, we've got that. And just a reminder, the largest tooled tank we have, we've only got a tank level 2, and the largest tooled tanks are 1.2 meters in diameter so far. So we've been heavily reliant on the Atlas, and of course a Juno as well, and now Titan. Well, I suppose that's how it's going to be. But taking a look at the engines related to Titan, we've got the LR-91 and it is the LR-87. Um, unlock costs 120000 And if we take a look at the LR-87, the surface ISP goes from, from uh, 250. Well, let's go with vacuum. 286 to 304 down here. Our current engines go for, from 278 admittedly lower up to 296 but I feel like these are sort of easier to cluster together and yeah I think they're just going to be what we use for a while okay one more thing before we check up on our first Mars probe we need to get lunar rated heat shields but I noticed that that technology is not available with our R&D building at its current level uh, we could also do with better RCS fuel and clearly with all the malmethylhydrazine and UDMH and everything in this technology, this is where we need to be. So that's 93 science like that. Early landing is going to cost 50. I don't know if I even care about the Gemini capsule anymore. Uh, maybe we'll just do it with one person, one Kerbal. Uh, these seem much more pressing now that I think about it. So 93 there, and then we need 110 to get to lunar rated heat shields because we do have like a sample return mission from the moon uncrewed. And uh, I mean, we don't actually have the contract yet, but it's available. And that would require a lunar rated heat shield in principle. In practice, maybe we could get by with something less, but I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, so we need uh, some extra science here uh, to tune about 90 in order to unlock these technologies, but also how much is the upgrade to the R&D building going to cost? One million. Well, I mean, we have that. I guess we shouldn't rush it because uh, we need to unlock those technologies first. If I wanted to consider the order of operations, probably uh, improve flight. Con this this technology is not that great. It doesn't do anything for us. It just has bigger thrusters, which we don't need. And but this is what we want. So, I'd say does early landing have anything important? Not really. Gemini lightweight lander. That's early. I mean, but there's no real point to it unless we can unlock this as well. Otherwise, we're gonna be stranding a Kerbal on the moon. But uh, it's interesting. That seems to be very high technology, but uh, they don't consider it that. Anyway, let's research this. And let's research this. Okay, so I decided to add Transfer Window Planner finally, and I decided to see what it had to say about a trip to Mars, with no insertion burn, of course. 
and it had this little thing up here you see and 4022 is certainly better than what we had last time but what it's saying is that we would have to leave pretty much immediately uh, see that one day 18 minute thing is what's going on so and then there's the next opportunity after two years over here which is much better but um, the question is what uh, you see sometimes it has these opportunities but it depends on you launching into the right sort of trajectory and I don't ever do that but uh, we do have a rocket ready to go for this if we want to try it out and yeah maybe I'll build another one yeah <laughs> let's let's build another one just in case but we will trust trans window planner oh there's the six day one that's one that I just created so somewhere between now and 59 days there will be an opportunity and we'll just pelt Mars with a whole lot of Mars ones the funny thing about how this all works financially is that it's cheap to build rockets well relatively cheap to build rockets and have them lying around it's expensive to roll them out it's expensive to actually use them so having them in storage is no big deal uh, so well I mean at least it's a third of the cost or a quarter of the cost something around there so yeah uh, we can certainly build a bunch more of these and have them waiting for us just in case we want to use them I have been planning on starting this episode by checking in on our Mars One probe, which we still have to do in 22 days before its mid-course adjustment, but instead we are launching a new one, and we'll see how this goes. Maybe it's the wrong timing, maybe it's the right one. I mean, there is obviously a window according to uh, Trans Window Planner. Yeah, I mean, it just depends on how we make orbit and whether that's the right position to start in. So let's see what happens. Throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. And launch. We've targeted the moon for reference as usual. We're past the speed of sound, approaching max Q. Everything looking fine. Okay, booster set. Okay, fairing separation. All good. Okay, getting ready for shutdown. And shutdown. 199 by 144. Okay, that will do. And separation. RCS. And we are ready to go. All right. Double check the RCS fuel. That's good enough. All right, let's see what the actual plot is. Okay, yeah, this timing is not good. Mechjeb tries to do it and gives me like 5,000 meters per second. I try to do it. It's about the same thing. I'm going to try and plot uh, course straight out, you know, just prograde and then do a mid-course adjustment and then see what happens. But uh, it's not looking particularly good and probably we should just wait until the one we had seen before. Um, the issue I think is maybe we need to have a way to tell Trans Window Planner that we aren't equatorial. There's a minimum initial inclination that we have which is 28.6 degrees or 28.5 degrees and um, yeah we really can't uh, get to certain uh, orbits around the Earth to start off from and that does change things. But anyway uh, I will come back to you with a mid-course adjustment plot, which neither tool can do on its own, and we'll see how that works. Okay, well, with a little bit of wizardry, we've managed to make an encounter happen anyway, and uh, basically the trick is that we have to use the current stage immediately. I mean, we can't carry it along the fuel uh, while the oxygen will boil off, and so we have to use this 4,107 now I've plotted using 3966 and then out at apoapsis or a little bit before it, it turned out we need to use another 316 meters per second to encounter Mars in 409 days now that's interesting because you know 
we're getting I mean, if we waited any longer uh we could well not really but still that's a pretty long path to mars is what i'm trying to say and uh, an interesting encounter indeed uh, usually it takes 180 days to encounter Mars. Basically, you see Earth is here. And so this is one of those uh, transfers where you'd be sending cargo, not people, right? Uh, this is not a Holman transfer. Holman transfer would hit Mars over here somewhere. Um, this is not like that. More than a year to get there. But um, it works. So we'll, well, hopefully it'll work. So we'll try it and it'll still meet the deadline for the contract. Another consideration. Uh, certainly didn't want to use all of the Delta V being indicated by this stage right now because some of it's going to boil off since the node's in one hour and seven minutes. So let's time warp to that. Okay, as you might imagine, timing is sensitive. Okay, throttle up. And ignition. Well, it's with a heavy heart. This is complicated. I mean, this is a touchy one. But uh, the other one is not going to work out for the flyby contract. This one will. Launch a new vessel is checkmarked. So, hopefully it'll work. But we have one more queued now. Actually, two more queued. And so, we'll try for that other window. Not, not this one, not that one. This one in 58 days. Timing of the burn looks reasonably good within a second. Shutting it down at the right time is gonna be tricky. We can't just look at the orbit with respect to Mars and see what happens there. I'll just have to go by this indicator. Oh, too far. Okay. Okay, within point one. We don't have a whole lot of margin to do the next burn. About 150 meters per second extra. But let's see if that burn needs tweaking. Wow, well that's pretty nice in a way. I'm not entirely sure which way around I actually want to go right now. We'll probably handle that once we get to Apoapsis and have a better read on things. I think this should be okay. All right, so in 243 days, we do this, uh, do a maneuver to get this orbit. Let's add that alarm. Quite a wait. All right, well, we're gonna deal with our other Mars One probe. That one cannot satisfy the contract which, because it wasn't, uh, counted as a new vessel. Before we do that, actually we're going to have to adjust this because we need to separate off this stage. So that's a little bit of a pain, but power wise, actually I think we could power this core too, at least for in the beginning, but once we get at Apoapsis we can't. Now we do get less sunlight at Apoapsis, that's a consideration but our new solar panel configuration actually supplies more power than our previous one. So it's not just a factor of two times. We, I don't know if we've got enough to get all the way out there. Uh, oh, well, that's not actually here, it's here. But I think it should be okay. But not with this avionics score, obviously. But I'm waiting until we get into sunlight before decoupling. There's hardly any direction that won't adversely affect our orbit, so let's just separate. Let's make sure that all these are topped off. Seems that way. Okay. And the net result at Mars. Is, well, uh, let's tweak the maneuver node editor a little bit. Aha. Ooh. Ooh. We've lost our encounter altogether, it says. Okay. Well, 314.4 meters per second now, so that's not too bad. 
And let me just uh, reset this maneuver node. It should be the same timing, but yep, there we go. All right, hopefully this probe works out. Everything is set with it. Let's check up on our previous probe. Okay, so the first Mars 1 is looking all right here as we aim for a correction burn. Two minute delay on the signal. And uh, let's just point at the node. All right, that'll do for now. Heck, that might be even better. Practically guaranteed communication, right? Right? Um, oh, come on, no, no, not that, no, no. Yeah, it's still within 20,000 kilometers. Oh, there's SAS, okay. Back to, well, I've pressed SAS so many times that it might go off. Um, add alarm SOI change. Okay, 109 days. All right, back to Space Center. All right, we are not quite at the next window for the Mars One mission, but we are ready for our rendezvous, our attempt at first rendezvous. And I'm really tempted to send up an uncrewed target and then just one crewed launch. But, you know, we do have this Lunar Atlas IV prepared. Maybe we should use that. Let me take a quick look at it. We could send another crewed launch afterwards, but, you know, if we can get it done with an uncrewed vehicle first, if it turns out it doesn't work, then we'll send another crewed vehicle up. It's sort of like the situation uh, where uh, I think it was Gemini 6 was supposed to rendezvous with an Agena, but the Agena exploded. So it got retasked to rendezvous with Gemini 7. Um, so if it turns out that this Lunar Atlas doesn't work uh, for the rendezvous, and we can just uh, have the alternate situation. Um, yeah, I mean, there's an old model sort of thing. We're probably not going to use it for anything else. We'll just put it into a regular orbit. It'll have power. The Pioneer 5 probe has plenty of solar panels and it'll hang out and be our rendezvous target. So I'm going to cancel edits. Okay, so other than it being in daylight, the timing really doesn't matter. We do want to get to a inclination that the other launches can match. And we'll just use rendezvous planner to line up with this when the time comes. So at the time of the launch is important. Uh, we'll want to launch the next one close in time to this. It all depends on rollout times, and I think the rollout times for the crewed vehicles is too long. Uh, if we launch a crewed vehicle initially, um, it'll probably take another four days to roll out the next one, and by that time the life support on the first one will have run out. So I don't think we can do it with actually having two crewed vehicles. Uh, we don't have a Gemini capsule which could hold out for 14 days after all. So, well, I mean, I could put the life support and uh, solar panels necessary for it to do that, but I haven't. So, yeah, uh, we're just going to have to do with uncrewed, reflecting on the situation. All right, so, yeah, let's see. Uh, we'll have to launch the next crew at about noontime on any subsequent day. It doesn't really matter when this is the target, whether it's the next day or not. Okay. Ignition. And launch. Let me double check that. Yeah, it's the old engine. So we'll have to keep the booster engines for a little bit longer. Okay, that should be sufficient time on these. Alright. Okay, fairing separation. Ooh, we don't have that much stage time, actually. I, I guess I was incorrect about the timing on this. Actually, we could allow the Atlas stage to deorbit and finish orbit with our 1 kN thrusters up here. We've probably got a lot of spare Atlas stages hanging out in orbit already anyway that I'll have to clean up at the tracking station. 
our crewed mission will, of course, go into a higher orbit rendezvous of this. This will be in the tight orbit. It has an option to help with the rendezvous, though. Since it's got a lot of fuel, it's a lunar atlas, after all. It's got enough fuel to go to the moon. Okay, uh, we'll say that that's going to deorbit. All right, separation. All right, uh, 242 by 163 is fine. We can just hold this orientation since it seems to be recharging like this. It can recharge much, much faster, but this will be sufficient. Okay, well, now for the crude launch. Yeah, it looks like the rollout time for these crude atlases is 3 days and 20 hours. So, rendezvousing one with another is not currently possible until I get more life support on each one. We could do that, but that will take time. Actually, you know what? It probably doesn't take much time to edit one of these uh, to add more food, water, and oxygen in. But the solar panels might take time. Uh, oh, we have to wait for reconditioning to start rolling out? That's interesting. I mean, you could sort of like roll it out to here while the pad is reconditioning by default. Kerbal construction time used to do that. Uh, I don't think I got the timing right to, to bring Naki out to the launch pad. I thought that we'd be okay, but it doesn't look like it. Um, can Naki stay on launch pad for like a whole day? Uh, no, I wanted that enabled. All right. Well, let's find out if that's a problem or not. Yeah, let's just get in line. All right. So good. Throttle up. SAS on. Here we go. Ignition. And launch. Oh, we have clouds today. Oh, we've lost one engine. Okay. Um, we just got on board. All right. Abort sort of completed. All right. Well, so much for Naki's first flight. Uh, we don't need that. Okay. Just armed parachutes. I guess they are armed. All right. Uh, well, RCS can bring us to negative surface velocity. These velocities shouldn't be too bad for coming back at. Oh, please don't go nose first. It's got to go nose first, but it's still not that fast. Well, on the bright side, we're pretty blunt on the front end, too. We're not exactly pointy here, so we're getting plenty of drag. We're not really pointy end first here. We're sort of less blunt end first. Well, of all flights for test flight to get us on, Atlas had been so reliable so far. Okay, recover, recover. I think we'll just put Naki Kerman in the other one. After all, she trained for the mission. Okay. Got one experience point, but yeah, let's roll out the next one and try again. Technically, we have our uh, Mars One window right now, but we can wait a day or two, so we'll just focus on this launch first since we're in the middle of it. Okay, we are ready to go again. Throttle up, SAS on, ignition. And launch. This time it is behind us, but like half the world behind us. 
Okay, let's flatten them out. Now a little bit higher, maybe. Booster engine set. Alright, they are off. Remaining burn time. Two minutes and a half. Because of our staging, I can't really see the stage time here. Okay, here we go, getting ready for shutdown. Much G-forces. And shut down. 167 by 146. Well, that should be good to allow it to catch up to us. Though separation at closest approach, it was saying some horrible thing. Hmm. Maybe we should just boost up to a higher orbit. Anyway, let's separate from the Atlas. Alright, and let's turn, well, you let, yeah, let's get the RCS thrusters on first, and then let's turn normal to get rid of the nose cap. Speaking of debris. That's probably pretty high. Um, we do have a crude altitude record of 500 kilometers to do. So 500 kilometers, I wouldn't mind. Oh shoot, I forgot to pick up the first EVA contract. Gosh darn it. So much for my cunning plan. I bet that requires launch a new vessel. Well, we have to go back to the Space Center to take a look. Okay, we passed 500 on the apoapsis. Right over here. We're going to adjust our inclination. And after that, we'll have to be patient. Okay, so we're going to leave Naki Kerman, or Naki Kerman, briefly and check on the contracts. Okay, yeah, EVA requires launch a new vessel. I better pick it up now before I forget. What's this Orbital Flight 1 crew? Oh, uh, hang out in orbit for nine hours? Well, that's pretty easy. We'll do that with the first EVA. We only have 180 days, but... Cannot select this contract, orbital flight with maneuvers, and two plus crew. Well, we don't have Gemini yet. Um, anything else you want to give me? Fly three tourists to crewed Atlas 2. Well, that... that uh, it's not a derelict. <laughs> it's got per a person on there that who has to come back. All right. Uh, so I guess we'll have to queue up a few more crewed atlases. Well, at least one. Okay, I've handled a couple of burns so that uh, we have an encounter. Separation of 4.3 kilometers relative speed, 29.7 meters per second. And we have nearly 200 left. So that should be enough to deorbit as well. I'm hoping. Um, unfortunately, I did have to step away and I didn't want to obviously leave this on, so I exited the save and came back in and now the clouds are messed up. So these are in a sort of static situation and there are no clouds at all in the map view, so sorry about that. But uh, here we go. Okay, minus target. I have to do everything backwards. That's the only interesting part of all this. Okay, there it is. The Pioneer docking target. I suppose we have to... Oh, and we got the crew duration record of a day. Um, I suppose we have to get within render range and then match speeds or something. I don't know exactly what is required. Okay, well... 256 meters, I guess we'll go for that. It sure doesn't like the situation yet. 120 meters per second is my absolute limit. We need to come back down at that point. Well, uh, I yeah, I don't know what's up with it, and 
264 meters, apparently not good enough. Let's have this vessel do some of the work. Well, this has rendezvous two craft in orbit here. This doesn't. That's so weird. See, I mean, this has the one crew member on board. This has the rendezvous two craft in orbit. It's a weird thing that the first orbit EVA requires a launch of a new vessel. I mean, come on. If they EVA, they EVA, right? Okay, this now says rendezvous two craft in orbit is checkmarked. That's fine. Well, we don't want that crashing into this, so um, target minus. I was afraid for a bit there that I'd have to like force finish the contract, but it looks okay. All right, so now that that's drifting away, let us check where we should deorbit. Um, we're coming close to Australia here. For attitude control, we do have the backup HTP inside the capsule. So if we have to use all this fuel to do the deorbit burn, that's fine. Technically speaking, the amount of fuel we need for the deorbit burn is supposed to be reserved up there. I never actually reserve it, but so uh, it should be enough right now, maybe, hopefully. And it seems like 68 units would have been more than enough. We still have plenty left over. But it's good to be safe. Speaking of which, let's just verify that we're still drifting away from the docking target. And I call it a docking target, but we weren't docking. It's supposed to be a rendezvous target. There's no docking port. But anyway, you know what I meant. Okay, now we finally get to orient the way I think we need to orient. <laughs> no more of this backwards stuff to use the one kilonewton thruster. We are currently over Mexico and hoping for a splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. I'm still not entirely sure why it's sort of leaning to one side when everything should be balanced and descent mode isn't on. Yeah, looking good. Right off the coast of Houston. So unfortunately didn't get the first EV done on this one, but we'll do that next time. And we also need to launch a few more Mars probes next time. It's pretty clear that we can send our Mars flyby probes to Venus as well. That's not going to be a problem. So in fact, they're overkill in terms of communication and solar panels, but that's, you know, simple anyway. So for this Earth to Venus window, we'll have some prepared for that. And we have full parachute deployment. Speeds are good. Okay, and splashdown. Bobbing. More bobbing. More bobbing. Recover. Okay, recover. Recover. Spam the recover button. Oh, I didn't realize the Gulf of Mexico was so choppy. There we go. Following crew members will be on leave until April 7th. That's interesting. Um, I didn't realize there would be an on leave thing. And only one day. Uh, didn't even mention that she would be on leave after the abort. <laughs> You would think that that would take a few days to shake off, but all right. One day is not any problem. I don't even know why they even bother, to be honest, since it takes more than a day to roll out anything with a capsule on it. But okay, um, we've got a lot of funds now. What are our obligations? Uh, 900,000 there, 135,000 there, and 47,000. Uh, altogether about a million and a bit. So not much by way of obligations, therefore we can get some more upgrades, I think. Let's just uh, knock that down a bit. And build speed is not the big thing. Let's up our science here. 
I had wanted to get that to one science per day. Let's do that. We haven't really gathered much science recently. We've been focused on fundraising, as it were. Okay, 0.9 science. I hit uh, 3 million. Well, I mean, the thing is the upgrades, right? I have to do this upgrade because otherwise we can't get the lunar rated heat shields. Let me just queue that up right now before I accidentally spend money. I I think if we're going to do a crewed mission to the moon, I might need a rocket. That's 350 tons. Um, I, I can do other things without 350 tons, like, of course, the Mars uh, flyby with a probe and Venus flyby with a probe. But by the time this gets done, we'll have launched those anyway. So let's start that one, too. But we are facing higher rollout costs as a result of that. Uh, well... Uh, maybe we should shift to Titan rockets as a result. We just unlocked the Titan tanks, so that's a possibility. We can move these up. So, anyway, we know what we need to do. We really need to get this uh, Mars one off, and we'll do that at the start of the next episode. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do pre press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.